Hey, what's happening, everybody? I am Chris. And I'm Christine. And as you can tell, we are not in the studio this week. We are absent this week. And so in a replacement, we are going to do for you is we're going to play back an old episode for one of our archive shows that you may have missed. And it's going to play for you right now. So enjoy it. Spins it, I watch, and then it hits double zero just like that. My first time playing, I win. And now, coming to you from the K2 Studios in San Diego, California, it's the world famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening? I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And welcome to the second episode of the Chris and Christine Show. Do, 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 do. Second episode. (laughs) Episode two, the sequel. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, well, this has been quite a crazy week. Thank you guys so much for all the support you've given us. Because without you, we wouldn't be here doing this right now. Right. Thank you so much for helping us make our inaugural episode a smashing success. We've loved getting DMs, comments, and emails helping us be more informed about the impossible whopper now chris i've received some fun facts for you about the impossible whopper but are you ready for this yeah what do you got baby all right so my friend and his wife who are probably listening right now shout shout out by the way shout Shout out out. to my friend steve uh they listened to the podcast this week and they have been eating these impossible burgers for five months they said that they actually started ordering them at i think it's called island burger like islands or something different? Oh, yeah, that one. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, Island Burger. It's called <laughs> Islands, the chain of them. Yeah, so uh, Steve told me that, yes, they do taste good, and they taste as good as real burgers. And get this one. When you bite into them, they actually have red juices that come out of them like no. real meat. I don't know how I feel about that. What? That's crazy. Red juices. Uh, now, I wonder, now that artificially, like, the red dye or whatever? I don't know. Isn't red dye number five, like not good probably i mean anything died is not good all right well we're just gonna have to go with them on this one i had another listener that sent me some facts and they said that the impossible whopper actually has 1800 milligrams of sodium regular burgers have zero wait sodium's bad for you right excessive amounts i think like your daily value is supposed to be 2300 milligrams so you get that in like one patty that's (laughs) just an fyi be aware of what you're consuming, people. Of, well, yeah, of course. I mean, it ain't like Ruth Chris is serving this stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, that's just our little report out on what happened last week and some of those great comments. But why don't you take it over, Chris? Okay. So this week we have a great lineup for you. Yeah. I'm super excited about the topics we're chatting about today. But before we do that, we want you, our listeners, to learn a little bit more about us. All right. So last week... I don't know if you remember, but I asked Chris if he wanted to share a little bit about what he does for a living or his hobbies. And he said, to be concluded. That's right. Yeah. So we were wanting to share a little bit more about him and what he does for a living. So we came up with a little game called the Guess What Game. Yes. Guess what I do for work. (laughs) Yeah. So uh, we've made it very easy. It's a multiple choice question for you. You have four different options. So here we go. All right. In terms of what Chris does for work, is he A, a technology consultant, B, a truck driver, C, a school teacher, or D, a police officer? So we are going to give you a second to decide. And while we do, we have a fun little new announcement for you. If you have any topics or questions you would want discussed on the show, please feel free to email us at Chris and Christine Podcast at gmail.com. That's Chris and Christine Podcast at gmail.com. All right, Chris, you've kept us in suspense long enough. Why don't you tell us what you do? Okay, everybody, if you had guessed truck driver, you would be correct. And yes, I am a truck driver ding, by trade. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so on our first date, I don't think you had actually told me what you did for a living. And I never would have guessed. I mean, not to stereotype, but I never would have guessed that you're a truck driver. I'd really love to hear the story of how that happened. Okay, I'm sure everybody else would too. So what happened was um, I was uh, in my early 20s. I was working for this um, 
like packaging company. They sold packaging supplies like uh, boxes and bubble wrap, things like that. And they had a couple old um, box trucks and they had this one old, I'm talking super old semi. It's an old cab over. If you if make trucking, you know what I'm talking about. It's a kind that looks like a big square box. The front windshield square, like a big front square. Anyways, it's ugly. And they had one in the shop, <laughs> and um, the guy who drove it was getting old, and he didn't want to do it anymore. But uh, I was new there, and they needed someone to drive it to replace the guy because he was thinking about leaving or whatever. And I was like, they asked me, "Hey, um, you got you want to drive the truck?" And I said, uh, "Sure. What do I gotta do? Well, you gotta go to truck driving school. You gotta get your truck driving license." You mean they didn't just like hand you the keys and be like, here, you can start driving? No, not, no, legally they couldn't do that. But, uh, you know, they, I got to sit inside it when I was, you know, younger. But, um, but no, I had to go to truck driving school. And back then there was a program you can do and it was free. By the way, they don't have this program anymore. Not that I know of. But it was free, but it was an entire like um, year course, though. It was uh, two nights a week of like classroom work and a little hands-on. And every Saturday was like hands-on for like an entire year. And then he had to take the test and all these tests he had to do. And finally, I got my uh, CDL license. That's, that's, that's uh, what we call for the commercial driver's license. So real quick, so you were working full-time. And then at night you were going to school and then on Saturdays you were like learning how to drive the semi? Yes, that's correct. That's for incredible. An entire, for an entire year. Thank you so much. So I did, I did that and I was working there for a little while doing that. And then like, you know, you talk shop with other people and they say like, oh, if you work here, you make more money. You work there, make more money. And by the way, I never, ever thought I would be a truck driver. Like, like all the jobs in the whole world, that would be like the last thing I would think I was going to end up doing. Well... So I know that you say that, but ladies and gentlemen, I have to brag on this guy just a little bit because I know he's hopped around with different places. He's been with the same company for a number of years and he's been top tier driver. And if you don't know what that means, it's a big deal. Yeah, it means I'm the best. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> you are in your industry. You definitely do have that designation. And he has had that for several years running. So even though it wasn't something that you thought you were going to do, you've been very successful with it and also to be more specific on actually what i do for truck driving because truck driving is such a broad term there's there's so many like different types of truck driving you know um there's over the road truck driver which everybody thinks of when you think of truck driver i'm not that i'm local i'm although i never have been over the road truck driving all my driving experience has only been like local in town the los angeles san diego region like that's it and what I do now is I am a gasoline tanker driver. I deliver the gas to the gas station. If it wasn't for me, your car wouldn't turn on, basically. Thank you very much. Sell. We appreciate you. Well, you're welcome, and you're all welcome. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so he works really long hours, and it's a pretty high-demand industry. So if you know anybody that's looking, recommend them to go into... The truck driving industry. Yeah, we're actually, speaking of what you just said that just now, I just thought of something. We are actually um, hiring in um, all the companies in the area, Los Angeles, San Diego area, are looking for drivers because a lot of the drivers we've had over the years have all retired. And we're having a hard time, for whatever reason, getting new recruits to come in. So they have actually increased the wages quite a bit in the industry, like a lot. So you wouldn't think about it, but uh, we make we do pretty good, you know. Yeah, and Chris and I have a lot of conversations about this, about like going to trade school and getting a certification or going to college, and you know, there's a lot of these different types of professions that are trade school certifications that are going unfilled with because there's a lack of qualified candidates. And so, I mean, it's just something that we talk about. I don't know if you all think about that, but I think it's a very viable career. Chris has found great success with it and oh, has yeah. a beautiful life here in San Diego. If well, I thank say you so. so much. So Christine, what does, uh, what made you want to do what you do? Well, so I'm in education, like I mentioned last week, but uh, that's kind of like you. It's not where I had envisioned that my life would be. I actually thought that I wanted to be a chef. Like I had my whole, whole portfolio that I was working oh, on. Oh, she'd be an awesome chef. Tonight oh. she cooked dinner and it was amazing. So what was it you actually cooked tonight? Do you know? Well, she should know. I mean, you cooked <laughs> yeah, it. I, I do know. <laughs> Uh, so tonight it was just, um, I did a roasted tri-tip in the crock pot. 
Then I charred some Brussels sprouts. I made a balsamic reduction and I put Brussels sprouts with pancetta. And then on the side, I created a little mix of uh, zucchini, summer squash, orange and yellow bell peppers, white onions with garlic powder. Wow, that sounds impressive. <laughs> yeah. So like I said, with my life, I kind of thought that it would end up differently. Uh, I thought that I would be a chef or a cosmetologist because I was artistic and I really wanted to do nails. Uh, but like you, my life took a little bit of a different path. And so here I am today. But that's definitely a different story for a different episode of a podcast. Perfect. That was well, well said. And well <laughs> cooked, by the way. That was amazing. <laughs> yeah. I loved it so much. It was so good. Oh, I'm so glad. Okay. So, so tonight. Oh, I'm yeah. Sorry. So back yeah. to you. I, I wanted to ask you one more question, Chris. Oh, so yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. You've been driving truck for a while now. What have you learned as a driver? I'm sure you have a lot of stories. Okay. One thing. I did learn is that people drive crazy and that um, you can kind of almost predict the way a driver is going to like turn based on their pattern or their body language or the way they're kind of moving. Like I say, okay, that guy right there, I bet you he's going to turn left. <laughs> he just turned left. Look at that. You see that? Things like that. Or, or this guy. Oh, or another thing I really realized is take advantage of people that are like on their phones. By the way, it's a law out here in California, but um, no one really follows it. Anytime anyone stopped anywhere at a light, at a, anything, they are face down into their phone. That's a perfect time to cut them off because they're not looking. You could just boom right in. <laughs> well, you don't do that at all because of course you I know, cut, well, that I cut them make, off, but I don't like use my phone. But I right. Cut that wouldn't make you top tier driver if you were cutting. Yes. Them top tier driver is like the best of the best. <laughs> it means you did nothing wrong, period. Right. It's actually interesting uh, in the trucks that. Chris drives, they have dash cams. And so he really, he has to be on it. And I think that's something that it's good for all of us to know is there's like that safety feature in there. And yeah. Well, it's basically like a blame who kind of thing. Like if there's an accident, you say your driver was doing, was on his phone or whatever or something, you know, um, with the video evidence, the video, the camera faces both directions. It faces in and out. So it catches the driver doing something wrong and it sees what's in front of you too. So yeah, I've been seeing a lot of Uber cars that actually are having that type of front oh, and yeah. rear you can facing. Buy, I think you can buy that at Costco. They've yeah. got like a setup for that. Yeah. So, yeah, so anyway. enough about that. So okay. I just wanted to hear about what you learned about driving. Oh, so thank thanks you. so much for thank sharing. And, no problem. And, and I'm sure and be that safe I've... out there, everybody. Don't yeah. drink and drive and don't text and drive. And make sure you got both hands on the wheel sometime when you're driving. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> So anyways, okay. Words of wisdom from Chris. Just FYI, he's fabulous on a road trip when I'm driving. Yes, definitely. I snore like nobody else. (laughs) Not a backseat driver at all. Oh, of course not. And maybe I should mention that my shirt does say I speak fluent sarcasm. It does. It does. does. So so there is that thread. Is that a hint? Is that a clue? Is that that, you looking Mm -hmm. at that? It's sarcasm with a little bit of snark. So it's snarcasm. There you go. There you go. I love it. All right. Well, we've spent enough time on this. Let's hop into what we're talking about. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. go. Okay. You guys ready? Okay. We are going to dive into a little bit of talking about gambling. Gambling. That's right. Like the casinos or the lottery or whatever. But in this particular case, it's going to be all about the gambling at the casino. But is it all gambling or is it one specific game? Oh, that's right. I forgot to tell you. My favorite game in the whole casino is roulette. That's right. Roulette. Roulette. It is so fun. You know, we love gambling. We love roulette. Uh, We like to go on little gambling dates. We go to the casinos nearby here. In fact, we might even be able to make it out there tonight. That would be perfect. Yeah, but... We have some fun stuff to talk about as it relates to roulette. Well, the roulette, the casinos out here, by the way, they did not start having roulette or craps or games like that till recently. And they're a little different than the ones you might find in uh, Las Vegas. But for this scenario, we're talking about the ones in Las Vegas because everybody knows about those ones. It's been a little wheel. You've got the little ball. It drops around. It dances around on the little wheel until it falls into a slot with a number. And that's how you play the game. But how I got started was kind of funny. I was in Laughlin. Probably I was like 21 years old. And um, I was new, you know, to the gaming. I didn't really gamble much. And I was only took 21, so I didn't have a lot of money. And I'm walking around the casino, and I'm looking at all the tables, and I'm looking at the uh, roulette table, and I'm watching everybody play and everything. And I'm like, what's this game about? So the guys, the dealer is trying to say it's numbers and whatever. So I'm like, okay, I reach in my pocket. I pull out $3. 
cash. And I said, um, that double zero number at the top, can I put this on that? Will that play? And he's like, yeah, yeah. You'll put straight up cash. Okay, three bucks, double zero, sure. Spins it, I watch. And then it hits double zero just like that. My first time playing, I win. It was like a hundred bucks. And for me at the time, hundred bucks was a lot of money. So I was super excited to get all the chips. And I was so excited. That's unbelievable. Your first time you hit it straight up. That's on a right. double zero? Yes. That's that's crazy. I, and the funny thing is now that I play, I never play double zero. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just stay away from it. But I love gambling. It's awesome. Well, I mean, I love gambling. I love playing roulette, you know. And I only, by the way, I only play with the money that I plan to lose. So if you're going to gamble, only play with what you figure you're already going to lose so that when you do lose, it's not like a big loss. I'm saying don't blow your whole paycheck or your mortgage or rent or whatever. Um, there is a number for that, by the way. We're not going to try to get all serious right now, but... Um, right, but we just want to say, like, when we're talking about gambling, we're talking about small amounts every once in a while. Uh, but it is something that's a little fun hobby for us. And that when we you like win, and when you win big, like I did a couple Walk of months Walk away from months the ago. table. <laughs> yes, a couple of months ago, I won pretty big on roulette. Oh, my goodness. It's like... You're on cloud nine. It's unbelievable. And then feeling. you stick the money in your pocket and you walk away. If you're good. If you're yeah. good about it. If you're dumb, you just start playing more. <laughs> so I, I want you to tell us, you know, you've been playing roulette for, you know, 20 something years, something like that. And so tell yeah, us what probably, your strategy yeah. is. Okay. Well, my strategy is I have my favorite numbers. Um, and my favorite groups of numbers, they're usually kind of in the center of the uh, board. Um, so, like, for example, this is kind of, like, off the, the wall here. I love the number 21 and 18. 18 because you're legally an adult. And 21 because you can drink and gamble, at least in Vegas. And they sit side by side. So I kind of just put a big stack in the middle between both of them. Well, I like that approach. I think that's a, a fun strategy. But... I am a newbie. I really am clueless when it comes to roulette. Chris has been teaching me a little bit, kind of been introducing me to the game. It's not that hard. It's like pick your favorite number, and then if it lands, you win. Right. I mean, you're you're simplifying it. But I am new to this, and I think that a little bit of that has to do with uh, kind of my life as an adult before moving to San Diego and several years before that. I actually, when I was in my... Like, I would say my mid-20s, I was involved in a church where gambling was not allowed, <gasps> drinking was not allowed, and we didn't what? dance. Yeah, it was super conservative. I love the people there, but for me, I had this, like, fear associated with it that, like, if I gambled a little bit, that it would get out of control. And so I didn't want to do it at all. And so when Chris and I started dating, and he was like, hey, let's go out to this casino that's near the house, I was like, ooh, this is kind of fun. And the first time we went to Vegas, I was like... Oh my gosh, what is this place? This is so fun. <laughs> so we sat down. I remember first time we went to Vegas, we sat down at the roulette table and I was just watching him and I was so fascinated by all of the colorful chips. Of course, that's how they get you. Yeah. Right? I, I liked the pretty colors and they have the colors pink and purple. Oh yeah. Yeah. And so I'm really attracted to that. So I typically get pink and purple. But I, I don't have a nest. Well, I guess I do have a strategy. Here's mine. Put a little bit on everything and you're guaranteed <laughs> to win <laughs> yeah. yeah this cost you though because you are spreading it out though right but i mean i i gain back what i win almost every time unless it's like zero or double zero but i will say that i like to decorate the roulette table to look a little bit like a christmas tree because i go. really i really do put like one chip on every single number and as long as I cover it pretty well, and as long as it doesn't hit zero or double zero, because I never bet on those, then I at least walk away with like plus one chip. That's fantastic. Well, you know, um, we, were, we were playing the last time. I lost all my chips already, and I was placing um, pretty big chips towards the end. I was placing big stacks, and she was being very conservative with her playing. She was kind of like spreading it out, like very thinly, a little pocket, little here and there. I say, well, you know what? If you would stack, because the payout per single hit is 35 to 1, which means if you had one chip, say on one number, that's $35 you're going to get back. Now imagine if you had $10 on that same, same single number. The payout is like, what, three fifty? Yeah, but see, this is where there's the big difference, and this is where we have a lot of conversations about 
like what we bet and on what and what our strategy is. Because Chris has this all in approach and I'm very careful in what I put out on the table. So it was funny that night when we were at the casino that I had an interesting conversation with Chris and the dealer at our table because Chris was encouraging me and like standing over my shoulder trying to say, you know, go all in. Yeah, because but- I actually had lost my money <laughs> prior to this happening. Yeah, I think that's an important detail. He had no chips left and I still had stacks and stacks that were going on. But um, Chris was wondering why I wasn't more risky with my my bets. And I said, and he laughed and the dealer laughed at me, you know, I'm in my doctorate. So sometimes I get in that researcher head and I said, actually, uh, research says that women are more risk averse than men when it comes to gambling. We tend to not make riskier bets if it's not a sure thing. And they both cackled like of they course, were laughing. Of course, of course we did. Because right. That's because I'm standing, I'm standing at a roulette table citing research. But I actually this week found an NPR report as well as more than 100 other research articles and studies that have found that women aren't as willing to take risks as men. But my question is why? If there's this much research on it, why? Because I think that I am a risky enough person. I'm a risk taker to a certain extent. But for some reason, researchers say that men are willing to take more risks. So my question for you, well, Chris, why do you feel so comfortable taking risks? Well, okay. First off, when I'm playing roulette and I'm down to like my last like few chips, like I'm what the hell? Let them put them all on whatever number, you know, that's kind of why I roll. But like, I'm not going to walk in and put down my, you know, hundred dollars or whatever all on one number. That's crazy. I would never do that. When it gets down to the bottom of the pile, it also depends if you're down, if you got nothing to lose, um, you're down to, like last few chips, whatever, you know, plan. This is now or never. So you're going to hit the jackpot now or you're never going to hit it. Okay. But my question is, does that only relate to gambling or are you risky like that in life? Because that's what this research is saying, that it's not only in gambling, but it's in life that men are willing to take more risks than well, women. You know, probably, you know, I, I mean, it, it's probably a thing, you know, guys can probably t- be, more, be more risky. I mean, look at the driving stats. People, guys are crazier drivers than women for the most part. You know, so I wonder what there is that like why it is that men are willing to take more risks than women. I think that we need to do some more research on that. We'd love your feedback on that, like what your perspective is and why why men take more risks. Or maybe you disagree with us. You know, maybe there's new research that you found that says that women are willing to take risks. But that sets us up perfectly for our next topic tonight which is relationships. What? That's like taboo. That's like taboo language, you know? (laughs) Right. Well, it's kind of related to roulette, don't you think? Of course. Yeah. Of course. There's similarities between relationships and roulette, taking risks, thinking about going all in. So I think it's important to remember that both Chris and I have been through divorce before. So taking risks in relationships can be intimidating. Am I right? Oh, definitely. You know, it's very scary, especially going to go on a blind date or any kind of date for that matter. You know, you don't know where this is going to go or it's going to lead. And you kind of hold a lot back. So you are kind of conservative towards the beginning. And as you kind of develop a relationship with somebody, you kind of do get a little more comfortable. And you do start to go a little more all in until you do really do go all in. And you put a little shiny uh, ring on someone's finger. (laughs) (laughs) So Chris had a funny analogy. I have to tell you this. One of the things that I love about him. I mean, there's so many different things I love about him. Thank but, you. Thank you. But one of the things is he speaks in analogies. Well, of, you know, okay, everybody speaks in analogies. I mean, Jesus spoke in analogies. They're called the parables. Right. So Chris comes up with analogies all the time. But he had this great analogy that he came up with that I really wanted him to share about relationships, roulette, risk taking. So Chris, do you want to share that with everybody? You're talking about the uh, story about the guy at the uh, casino? The battle black. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. So we're at the casino. Same time we were there that one night. And this dude was playing. He put like 100 bucks down. He was playing. He actually was doing pretty good. Um, and he had, I don't know what he had, maybe 100, 150 bucks in chips. And he um, decided to put it all on black, like which is crazy. I didn't even put that much money on one single sp- thing. But he did. He put it all on black. And then the guy just like starts walking around. And he literally just like walks away from the table like, oh, well. Like, I guess I lost it. And the dealer had to, like, shout him out. Hey, no, dude, come back, come back, come back. You actually won. 
And it was kind of crazy, you know? Yeah. It was really crazy because this guy was walking away from the win. Like he had all of his chips on the table. He'd already made the decision to go all in. And before he could see what the outcome was, he was walking away. Like he didn't even want to wait for the, like the punchline. Right. So he thought that he already lost. He already much like expected to lose. And he just said, oh, I guess that's it. So he started walking away like, oh, well. You know, but uh, but he actually won, which is crazy, you know, and it won like a lot of money, you know, I mean, oh, gosh. Yeah. And I love this story so much, especially when we're talking about roulette and we're talking about relationships, because I think that it reminds us of how important it is to push through uncertainty, because that was what happened with that guy is he was uncertain. It was 50 50 whether or not he was going to win. And he felt like it was easier to just walk away from the win than face the loss. And I think that that's what sometimes people do, maybe not just in relationships, but other aspects of life is like, let's just walk away from it so we don't have to face failure. And what we recommend is don't walk away from the win. And why is that, Chris? Because the jackpot is out there and it could be yours. And we just like to remind you that we are not relationship experts. I mean, we're still newbies at this thing. We've been together for only a year and a couple of months. A cup of coffee, really. Right, in the bigger scheme of things. But we have learned some things on our journey, and we love to share with you along the way. But we are not therapists. Yes, we have to put that out there as a legal disclaimer. We are not (laughs) therapists. (laughs) Right. Uh, So that kind of wraps up our two big topics, but we are going to quickly bring in our last couple of things because we know you've been waiting for it. And so without further ado, we are going to jump into hot topics. My favorite. Here we go. Are you ready for this one? Yes. What do you got for me, baby? All right. So this one in hot topics has to do with donuts. Oh, I love donuts. I know. Not just donuts, but glow in the dark donuts. Wait, they glow in the wait. They glow in the dark. Right, they glow in the dark. So glow in the dark donuts are a new trending item on Instagram, according to Mashable. They started in Sydney, Australia, and here's how you make them: you take a regular donut, then separately in a bowl you get prepared frosting. You know, like the kind that you can get in the bakery or the baking aisle at the grocery store. Okay, okay. Separately, you crush up vitamin b tablets like like vitamins vitamin b tablets and then you mix it in with the frosting and it makes the frosting glow they said it's like the thiamine 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 something like that thiamine do you have to like like with glow sticks you have to break it or do you have to like put it like in the dark or something no so i was watching the video and it's like they crushed up all of the vitamin d tablets and then they poured it in with the frosting and they mixed it and then it started to glow and oh so these are called glow nuts <laughs> that is the official name we are not being glow, inappropriate glow nuts, huh? yeah so my big question for you chris is would you eat these vitamin B you know, glowing donuts? No, I would donuts? only if it was in the dark. It'd be kind of cool. Like pitch black. You're like, check me out. We got the glow nuts in our mouth. And you run around with the glow nuts in your mouth. You're like, hey, what's up, glow nut wars? And you run around and you like try to like catch them. You so know, it's like, them. like if you could smear that frosting on somebody, would they start to glow in the dark then? Well, I don't know about all that. But maybe, you know, I could see this being a rad thing like that. Oh, it's a rad. I said at <laughs> like, a, uh, like a rave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think it, I was watching the video and it, it looked really intriguing. But then I also started to wonder, like, what are the long term effects of consuming all of that vitamin B? If it's glowing on the donut, the chances are it's like glowing on your inside, right? Oh, gosh. I wonder what a toilet looks like after that. All right. So <laughs> please, if you decide to test out creating glow donuts, take a picture, post it on our Facebook page, The Chris and Christine Show, or email it to us because we would love to hear your stories, but we are not advising you to overly consume vitamin B. We are just saying it is a trending topic. Yes. In Sydney, Australia of all places. Yeah. Down under. Yeah. (laughs) 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 All right. So we're going to just wrap this session out with our quick, would you rather? And this would you rather comes to us from my 14 year old son, Ezekiel. And he would like to know, and you get to go first, Chris, would you rather be stranded on a deserted Island with a dog or with a cat and why? Oh gosh. Well, I'd have to say probably a dog because dogs, man's best friend and a dog is like bigger than a cat. So if something you ran into like say a grizzly bear on this deserted island, <laughs> the dog would actually like do something like a cat is probably going to like purr and leave you alone and like bring you a dead mouse once in a while. What do I do with that? 
and um, you know, it's probably gonna scratch you when you like you you know petted it wrong or something. <laughs> but a cat. Oh, by the way, in a cat, think about this. You're on a deserted island, so there's water everywhere. Have you ever put a cat in the bath? <laughs> you know, <laughs> see what happens to a cat when you put a cat in the bath. Now a dog, a dog, my dog jumps in the bathtub all the time. If I say the word bath. My dog like gets all super excited, runs to the bathtub. He's like, wait, wait, my turn, my turn. Okay, calm down. Get the water in there first. Relax. Just chill out. He'll jump in there while it's still filling up. He's all super excited, you know? Right. Well, I wouldn't pick a dog. I would pick a cat, but here's my reasoning why. Cats are smaller. They eat less. So food's going to go a little bit further because, you know, when you're trying to figure out what you're going to eat plus a huge dog... You well, I, well, I didn't know we had nutrition. to feed. I didn't know we had to feed the animal. Oh that was part of the program. Okay, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> we keep all living things living. But I was thinking because you're on a deserted island that cats actually like fish, and so you'd be able to catch oh, fish, yeah. and so there'd be like an endless supply of food. And then cats are furry but like a little I bit. Said, Try to get a cat in the water to catch no, your fish. No, you're catching it for oh, them. Why catch it for the it. You're fish? You're sharing. Oh. Sharing is caring, oh. so you don't have to like make extra. I don't oh. know if dogs eat. Fish. I well, don't I'm know. telling you, if there's nothing else to eat, a dog will probably eat whatever. You know, dogs eat. eat I've seen some stuff. <laughs> right. Know? Well, you know, I was just thinking that you know, cats are smaller. They take up less space. That they might not be as invasive. Might not leave as much of a footprint on the a deserted island. So that was my thinking. Yeah. This has been so much fun. We want to thank you for joining us for week two of the Chris and Christine show. And we do want to let you know that you can join us over on Facebook on our Facebook page, the Chris and Christine show. And we'd love to see your love over there. Yes. Thank you so much. It's been a crazy week. And thank you so much for all the support. And also, if you want to email us, you can email us on the show email. And you can write us with comments, show ideas, or even uh, future uh, show sponsorships. I'm talking to you, big wigs. <laughs> I'm Chris. And I'm Christine. And until next week, keep moving forward.